On Sunday, residents in eastern Ukraine went to polling stations to elect parliament members and prime ministers. Voting has come to an end and counting now underway. Around 30 percent of the ballots have been cast and counted in the self-proclaimed Lugansk People's Republic. Igor Plotnitsky, the current leader of the region, is in front with 63 percent of the vote. The U.S. and EU say the vote violates Ukraine's constitution and its results have no power. Meanwhile, international observers stated that the elections were free and held in accordance with democratic standards. In the Donetsk People's Republic, more than 50 percent of the votes are counted. Early results look set to give the role of president of Donetsk to Alexander Zakharchenko, the current leader of the self-proclaimed republic. The Ukraine government says it won't recognize elections, branding the vote illegitimate. Kiev recently elected its own lawmakers, one of them Yuri Bereza, who threatened to carry out attacks inside Russia. More details from Paula Slier in Donetsk. These comments will be taken seriously, although certainly there is an element of bravado for the cameras. If we look at the comments themselves, he was saying things like organizing blasts in Russia. He spoke about intruding, invading, using reconnaissance detachments and sabotage groups. He is now a member of parliament. He is, of course, a former Ukrainian military field commander, and he is known for making these kind of belligerent comments. But let me make the point that very often these field commanders do do make blatant and outrageous threats against Russia. You have had in the past where one of the Ukrainian far-right leaders threatened to blow up gas pipelines that travel from Russia through Ukraine to Europe. He, of course, is part of the same ilk, and so his comments need to be seen in that kind of context. context. He made these remarks on a popular Ukrainian television show, so he was obviously trying to excite and build support amongst the Ukrainian audience. This is all against the backdrop of um, the self-proclaimed Eastern Republics choosing their new leaders today. Um, that's against the will of the government in Kiev. How have they been progressing today? The polls have closed. There were concerns that there could be provocations throughout the course of the day. We have heard from the Central Election Commission that says there were incidents of Ukrainian soldiers trying to block roads to prevent voters from getting to the polling stations. They also say that there were several armed groups who were affiliated with the Ukrainian National Guard who tried to enter the region, but they were kept out by the Donetsk Special Forces. This comes as several dozen international observers are on hand to observe these elections. And the comments that they have been making is that these elections certainly were free and fair and very important. I believe that the elections followed international standards for democratic elections. I was very impressed with the enthusiasm and the vigor in which people went to the polls to express their opinion. I think the process, what we were, um, what, what was possible for us to see and what we witnessed was that they fit completely into generally accepted democratic electoral standards. Moscow has said that these elections are important to legitimize the leadership here in the regions of Lugansk and Donetsk and that they are part of what was agreed to by the two sides back in Belarus. Also reports on Sunday that a huge military convoy of up to 90 trucks without markings was passing through eastern Ukraine. This is Kiev forces claim there was an intensive deployment of Russian troops and equipment near the border. Foreign affairs analyst Nabojsha Malich thinks the news outlets failed to provide convincing evidence, though. What is this, the fifth or sixth phantom convoy the Ukrainians have spotted? There were, there were Western journalists who reported seeing Russian convoys with their own eyes, never providing any pictures because cell phone cameras apparently don't exist. Uh, and there are no consequences for doing so, at least not in the West. At this point, it's, it, I'm not very optimistic about the peace process simply because there's no political will in Kiev to finish this peacefully. I think that uh, it's one of those democracies, whatever the EU says it is, peace is whatever Washington says it is. Democ you know, elections are democratic if Washington says so, but they're not if Washington says otherwise. Uh, it, it's a complete double standard. 